So when it comes to the way we deal with a patient and my focus on time and education, I think one of the biggest things we have that is the leads to the red herring, money spent treatments, unnecessary and maybe adverse events, has to be our over-reliance upon imaging studies. And that comes from the lack of time as well. Because it used to be, before we had access to things like MRI, someone as simple as a neurosurgeon would have to do a really thorough exam on a patient so as not to get a surprise when the patient was taken to the OR. But then we came up with these miraculous new imaging studies like magnetic resonance imaging. And while they can be game-changing when it comes to identifying of pathologies, the problem is all too often these pathologies or these studies are overread or even sometimes completely misread, leading to conditions or treating conditions that do not necessarily require being treated. And the classic example is if you do shoulder MRIs on a 50 or 60 year old patient that has no shoulder pain whatsoever, more than two thirds of them are going to have rotator cuff tears. So then how do you know just because they have shoulder pain and you see a rotator cuff tear that that tear is symptomatic? The same holds true for studies relevant to the lower back. Um, there are numerous studies where the author took about 100 patients that had no back pain whatsoever and yet more than 50% of them had disc bulges and herniations and 30 some percent of them had bulges and herniations at multiple levels and that's the asymptomatic population. So that means you have a 50-50 chance of having a pathology whether you have pain or not. And the inverse of that was true too. There was a more modern study where they took 3,107 patients that presented to two ERs during the month of January 2013 with the complaint of acute low back pain. And almost 60% of those patients' MRIs were negative. And of that small number of studies or patients where they had positive studies, the author cited a poor correlation with the level of the pathology on imaging study and the distribution of their complaints on the clinical exam. But yet, if someone has back pain and we do an MRI and it shows a disc pathology, all of a sudden, all the treatment seems to be focused towards the disc pathology, yet no one ever validated the fact that that pathology is clinically significant on imaging study. And the weird part is, if you go so far as to treat that patient with a conservative procedure, let's say an interventional injection or oral medication, and the symptoms go away, did we not just create a situation where you have a patient that has a pathology and that is now asymptomatic? Because we know that if we repeat the MRI, the disc pathology is still going to be there. So if I had to have a mantra relative to imaging studies, because we do use them as part of that overall clinical assessment, but it's a piece of the puzzle, but what I advocate doing first is read the patient and then look at the imaging study and see where it comes into the context of what you would like to do with respect to treatment. Does it explain what you believe the patient might be experiencing? And if so, can you use that data to help, help shape that medical decision-making process to determine what that patient needs or may require from that patient-centered standpoint? But the worst thing we can possibly do, which leads to things like unnecessary back surgeries, it would be to rely upon the MRI alone. But then again, you know, after being in practice for 30 years, if there was one condition that probably makes up at least half of my patient population over all of these years, it's been post-op low back pain. So if these patients have problems after the surgery, how do we know that the surgery was really necessary to begin with? And I can't tell you how often that we see problems that are outside where the surgery was that could have been fixed with something as simple as an injection or even just a different focus treatment. So I'm not saying that all surgeries are not necessary, but I'm saying maybe we should take a step backwards and look at other options before we jump the gun.